In the meantime, we turn to the coronavirus in this country, and tonight cases rising in 31 states and Wisconsin with a record number of hospitalizations now. President Trump with two rallies planned there in coming days. Tonight, more than 206,000 American lives have been lost. More than 30 states in Puerto Rico reporting cases on the rise. The teachers' unions in Wisconsin now calling on schools there from kindergarten all the way up through high school and college to go virtual. President Trump planning those two rallies, and tonight the governor asking the president to skip them or to ask his supporters to wear masks. Here's Eva Pilgrim. Tonight, a record number of COVID patients straining hospitals in Wisconsin. We are nine months into this pandemic. And right now, it's not slowing down. It's picking up speed. In one town, parents outraged after an assistant football coach stayed on the field after learning during a scrimmage that he had the virus. That coach later fired. They can't believe that the coach did this. The governor, who has pleaded for national leadership on the virus, now calling on President Trump to either skip his Wisconsin rallies this weekend or require his supporters to wear masks. The president challenged about masks during the debate, saying Dr. Anthony Fauci had changed his position on masks. Dr. Fauci said the did I, not I say want to ask you, we he got a little bit more than a minute left in this masks segment. Masks are not good. Then he changed his mind. He said masks are good. It was seven weeks ago Dr. Fauci told David there should be universal wearing of masks. I feel that universal wearing of masks is one of five or six things that are very important in preventing the upsurge of infection. Today, Dr. Fauci pushing back against the president in an interview with ABC's Start Here podcast. So anybody who has been listening to me over the last several months know that a conversation does not go by where I do not strongly recommend that people wear masks. Cases now rising in 31 states. The Latino community, one of the hardest hit, making up 56% of deaths in Texas and 48% in California. What we're seeing really is historic decimation among the Hispanic community by this virus. In San Diego County, Elvira Martinez was first hospitalized with the virus, followed by her daughter Cassie. The 29-year-old with no underlying conditions suffered two heart attacks before dying of the virus. She's my older sister. I'm trying to be strong. Never in, in my wildest dreams or nightmares would I have thought that this this would have happened. This, as a new CDC study found a 55% increase in cases among 18 to 22 year olds last month. 19 year old Appalachian State student Chad Dorrell was reportedly healthy before getting the virus, later dying of COVID complications. Everyone says, like, oh, it's always the older people who it affects the most, but like he was healthy. And so, like, seeing that it happened to him, like, makes me feel a little more worried about everything. And new projections show that risk may be increasing in the northern part of the country as temperatures drop and people just get tired of wearing masks and social distancing. But researchers say there still is time to take those measures and minimize new cases. David. All right, Eva Pilgrim with us tonight. Eva, thanks. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.